Welcome back to Hero Goldberg. Today we'll be talking about RFK Jr.'s campaign for president. He is one of the more interesting choices this time around. Of course, we're talking about the United States here, so it's not saying much. <laughs> Regardless, something of a pro-working class, common man Democrat interspersed with Clintonian neoliberal simping. So it's hard to tell exactly which direction he'll take if he ever gets to a credible position or in the unlikely event he wins the executive office. But I thought we would delve in. Now, on the issues is not functioning anymore, and I side with is unreliable, so I'll be using Wikipedia as a happy medium. If you don't really care for that, I don't know what to tell you, but let's proceed. Starting out, abortion. He is generally pro-choice, but then floated a 15-week abortion ban and backpedaled. This is his greatest Achilles heel in terms of the Democratic primary, because a lot of young women under the age of 25 are progressive or staunch, passionate defenders of a baby's right to die. On the other hand, you have the pro-life conservatives. Oh, we've got the morals and God on our side. But they must face the implication of, on the societal, economic, criminal front, certain people reproducing who perhaps should not be. And when you tell these folks, why don't you adopt that kid who has some difficulties born to uh, someone in the trailer park or in the ghetto? Oh, no, 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 that's a cuck move. At least the internet conservatives say that. I know that the internet's not real, so they're all AI, chat GPT types. Nevertheless, it is hardly a simple issue. You can feel that you're correct ethically, but then you lose out collectively on a societal basis or vice versa. Tied into abortion, we can just hit healthcare real quick. He's been attacked by the communist magazine Jacobin for not endorsing Bernie Booty Boy's Medicare for All. He actually opposes government takeovers over the pharmaceutical industry, but has said maybe you could have a single payer where you either choose private insurance or have the government option. That might ameliorate costs for Americans, depending on how it's designed. If it's done in a manner where it's inferior quality care or waiting lists, it's deliberately sabotaged, it could make the situation actually far worse. And at the same time, I think he's got better considerations like have people regulating pharma that are not just pharma shills. That's easier said than done, but certainly a superior position when compared to the Republicans, American Health Care Act, Oh, let's just do whatever corporations want. So somewhat refreshing. He obviously was against the forced injections. He has been speaking truth to power on these big corporations, even on the content of stuff and food. He's discussed when in relation to transgenderism, chemicals in the water supply, Alex Jones. He says we should look at SSRIs and potentially their impact on mass shootings by young people. You know, up until the late 80s, early 90s, these companies would not sell SSRIs to kids. And then the new wave of capitalists said it's a great idea. In all these respects, he's superior to Trump, who is afraid of talking about Operation Warp Speed because he says, my, my fans don't like it. Uh, yeah, it's a very interesting state of affairs. But corporate shilling, big pharma shilling is the problem. Any candidate who does that is untrustworthy. And you have the number two now in the GOP primary is literally a big pharma shill right after people started getting skeptical of big corporations, here's the venture capitalist biotech person to the rescue telling you, don't worry, it's all okay. So you have to pay attention to this stuff because most people are just simps who do not. In regards to foreign policy, he wants us to not get as involved in these proxy conflicts, confront the military industrial complex. This once more is a massive boulder to move there's a very good chance you'd be turned into your father or your uncle if you try to. But it is a far more forward-thinking position in the sense that what are we really accomplishing by getting engaged in these conflicts? It doesn't make the world a safer place. It's often just a stopgap measure, which then leads to more disaster down the line. Of course, people will say he's pro-Care Bear Land. And this is true, as most are. Now, he did get in trouble for a quotation taken out of context where they said he suggested Care Bears were more immune to COVID. Actually, the Care Bears, at least in Care Bear land, had one of the most aggressive inoculation 
forced programs. They became the basis for, I want to say it was Pfizer's structure because of their medical database. And Netanyahu has openly said this. I do want to note a bit of a side there. The more I study the Care Bear Palestine position, and as much as you can criticize the Care Bears for being hypocrites when it comes to not accepting refugees, their security policies, I have a lot more respect for the typical Care Bear, far more industrious, far more intelligent, you know, innovative. They actually have some kind of vision and drive in life. This is not true of most Palestinians. The entrepreneurial Christians get out, the smarter Muslims get out, and you're left with a bunch of low IQ Arab cells, Muslim cells who thrive off of outdated conspiracy theories. And some conspiracy theories are true, but when you allow it to control your whole existence, you will just be perpetually poor and powerless. Yeah, they don't have maybe the military might to confront Care Bear land, but they could be like a Gulf state if they really hunkered down and enshrined the value of education and again, having an idea for what they want to be. Instead, you've got people like Arafat and Mahbub that are content to make peace with the Islamists and then hoard all the aid money for themselves while keeping the people stupid. This is the difference where in Care Bear land, they cut off, the, there's no more financial aid. There is the military aid, but much of that turns around and is purchased from American companies. So it's not strictly like you lose out. No, it's, it is the military industrial complex. So you can oppose that, but there's just, in general, higher standards of, uh, I guess you could say, ethics when it comes to transactions. There's more of like a rational approach as opposed to just hoard the money and keep the people stupid. And you're seeing now, as much as people criticize Caribou land, it's not a monolithic state. There's opposition to certain moves by the government, depending on who's in power. And they're dealing with their own problems. Are they going to be able to integrate the orthodox into the economy or not. So it's going to be interesting to study. It's one of the most fascinating countries in the world in that regard. Go ahead and get angry, but I don't think you're going to have a real competent response to that as opposed to just repeating talking points by people who don't like them. In terms of the economy, he wants to break up monopolies and says if there's going to be bailouts directed towards the working class, middle class, small businesses, which is a very valid point. I mean, the Republicans criticized a lot of the COVID relief, but they never really had a better solution. They were still in favor broadly of bailing out corporations. So that's, again, a very striking position to hold. Most modern Democrats would be purely neoliberal and say, we don't, we're not even going to bother. We'll just go with the big moneyed interests. Kennedy, rather surprisingly, him being an environmental lawyer, he does endorse nuclear power, which is seen by many conservatives as the panacea. I'm not entirely against it. I mean, obviously, when you go nuclear, it just encourages continuous development and growth, which is one of the big problems when you really talk about the environment and pollution, uh, just like population growth, right? People will try to cite Peter Zihan, who is a known fraud, who prom who's pushing that for neoliberal interests, right? It's just like they said, you need immigrants because to grow the economy. And then a few years ago, it was automation is going to destroy all the jobs. You need UBI. And now we're back to, oh, there's a population collapse. It's like, which one is it? If you're going to have automation, supposedly, you, you know, where's going to, we need more people, but there's less jobs or you need less people. It, it, it makes no logical sense. These people, if you listen to them, these pro-business types from one year to the next, you'd think that they are like schizophrenic or something. They have some sort of split personality. But yeah, I do think he's got some more interesting views on the economy. And going back to nuclear power, it's not so much using it. It's the trend towards putting increasingly less competent people into positions. I had the opportunity to be a nuke tech some years back. I ended up going a different route career-wise. But it's very intricate serious work. And if you give it to someone because it's representative or it's progressive, you could have a real disaster on your hands. And that's something that you know, not anyone seems to be serious about because they just want growth for the sake of growth and they don't really want quality, you know, regardless of what they claim. They don't want quality. I suppose we have to discuss immigration, even though it's not terribly interesting. He has been critical of Biden on the border. I definitely would not expect him to go in the direction of true restrictions. That being said, 
he's probably better than these meritocratic immigration types. Just so you know, that's another corporate horror shill word, which what they're referring to is developing countries that have diploma mills, and they put out a bunch of people with mathematics masters or PhDs, computer science, physics, and of course, they'll be the first of the list for meritocratic immigration, even though a lot of it's based on cheating, it's not the high, same standards. So nothing really changes. You're still serving large corporate interests and you, you know there's corrupt lobbying system, whatnot. I'm not gonna go too much into that. I did in the last book I wrote. Suffice to say, I don't expect any of these candidates to make a real difference when it comes to the uh, migration problem. Let's say, what is a reasonable reform, a halfway point? Let's say 85 to 90% of those, legal or illegal, will be women under the age of 25 with no kids. The families keep them together, send them back. The men can be national populists and national conservatives back home and work on their countries. It's a better solution. It somewhat solves the problem uh, the social issue, right? It might deflate simping a little bit if you bring in some more Pujas and Grace Changs and Guadalupes. It could help the sub five. So it'd be one benefit because really immigrants have very few benefits. At least if they're female, you might, okay, you, you can do something with them. Otherwise, it's just not hugely advantageous for like as far as the average dude is concerned. So I would put that forward. You can make it to a feminist argument. Now, people would say, oh, but they're going to vote blue. You think they're not going to vote blue any other way? You think you're going to get a bunch of curry cells to vote for a candidate who's going to uh, forcibly repatriate them? Good luck with that, dude. It ain't going to work. So you might as well have at least that compromise benefit to the extent it's going to occur, in my opinion. Whatever. That's just an idea to be uh, foisted out there and probably ignored. So with that being said... Would I, in fact, vote for RFK? I would certainly consider it. I think he's my number two choice at this point. I prefer DeSantis because he's one of the only competent people running who has shown that he can achieve things. Now, granted, he's not going to have a Florida legislature in D.C., but I can. I think he would be able to make compromises that would be bigger wins for the country, at least to the extent the short term, because the country is going down the drain regardless. No to Tim Scott, Trump is incompetent, and even if he gets in, which I don't think he will, I pointed this out in the Dark Brandon video, a lot of people that work for corporations or the governments still working remote, they have stable enough jobs, like the young people, unless they are actually finding real privations, like they're not able to afford rent, they have to move in with mom and dad, they can no longer bring over Chad, Tyrone, and Oofy Doofy for the night, they have to give up a lot of those privileges, their Netflix subscription. They're still going to vote on the basis of abortion or progress or LGBT rights. They don't care the fact that the construction worker is getting destroyed because he drives an hour and a half and his gas is $100 to fill up. They're not going to be moved that much by it. So even if you see some polls saying Trump is ahead, don't buy into much of that. And if he does get in power, he's going to be paralyzed from the very get-go by hostile governments, Congress, everything like that. I just don't think he has political capital anymore. So he would have to really have a massive Republican majority to actually do anything. I, I think it's just a waste of time. Doug Burgum is a 90s Bob Dole Republican, probably a nice guy, obviously not one you want. Nimrata, Krispy Kreme. I was hoping that he would be on a debate stage with Trump and just light up Trump, which needs to happen. He uh, he wouldn't be necessarily a good president, but he might be more competent than Trump. He's definitely a neocon. Pence, whatever. What is this? What is? There's also these other people running on Instagram, like Doug Brinkley, Perry Johnson, Hirsch Singh. Get them all up there. Why not? Asa Hutchinson, and then meritocratic immigration. So, yeah, none of these people are serious candidates. They're all corporate whores. This is what makes RFK kind of interesting. I, once more, I think you're generally going to have politics as usual. I don't see major changes coming down the line. It's going to continue being polarized over various matters. But if you had someone who at least could make some slight changes, like I think DeSantis might, it would be halfway decent. And mind you, I should have talked about this earlier in the video. When people talk about, like, they get all fixated on legal immigration, and it's going like, dude, as far as, like, they have to be legal, and I'm going... 
Well, if all that matters is a piece of paper, why not just give people amnesty? And they uh, pay their fines and they get their temporary permit and go from there. Instead, they want them deported so they get in line and come back in and have papers and magically become Americans. It just seems like a stupid concept if that's your belief about the nation state. That's why I'm saying to the extent it's going to happen regardless, make it overwhelmingly female. So at least there's some benefit you might get, you might be able to smash here or there. That would be a positive dynamic as the nation is burning regardless. Yeah, let me know what you think of RFK or if you're supporting another candidate and I'll decide whether or not you get it.